Who is the dawn goddess of the Anglo-Saxons? Let's find out. To answer this, we must look to the oldest attestation of the dawn goddess. We find her name in Sanskrit in the Rig Veda, which is the oldest religious scripture in the world and is much older than the Bible by thousands of years and beyond. What to say if it being written down, it was orally recited thousands and thousands of years before it was even written down. So it's a very old, old religious scripture. It's of the spirituality, religion, worldview, civilization called Sanatana Dharma, which is Sanskrit for the eternal natural way. To learn more about uh, Dharma itself, I would highly recommend the YouTube channel called Dharma Nation. That is D-H-A-R-M-A space nation. Um, it is uh, led by Sri Dharma Pavartika Acharya, who is an American, uh, non-Indian uh, Acharya, who will tell you the Vedic tradition as it is, without any embellishments or fluffy language or what have you. So this you're getting the real thing from a bona fide Acharya. Let's move on. So, uh, her name in Sanskrit is Ushas. All right. So Ushas is the name of the dawn goddess in Sanskrit, and uh, this means dawn. And for those of you who are linguistically oriented, um, I have to say as, as an aside, uh, Ushas does not mean east. Okay, as in the direction. All right. So it is not. Uh, it does not mean east. Uh, Purva. Purva in Sanskrit, forgive me for my bad pronunciation, in Sanskrit means east, okay? Moving right on. Uh, in Greek, uh, we have Eos, uh, name, of the, name of the dawn goddess, and also means dawn, all right? So we're having a little uh, thing going on here. So we got um, Ushas, name of the goddess, and it means dawn. So in the Greek, we have Eos, the goddess, and it means dawn. In the Roman culture, uh, in Latin, Aurora, um, also means dawn. So that's the name of the goddess, and it also means dawn. So we have here, from the oldest culture in the face of, uh, of all time, with the Vedic culture, uh, we have Ushas, uh, name of the goddess, and it also means dawn. And we have, in ancient Greek, we have uh, Eos, name of the goddess, and the word means dawn. And in Roman culture, we have the goddess Aurora, um, and it also means dawn. So we have this consistency, right? Um, however, I must say that Vedic does not mean Indian whatsoever, okay? Um, this is something that goes way beyond even the conception of India itself, uh, what have you. That, and I, and no, I'm not hinting towards some kind of migration in or out of the subcontinent part of Asia. No, um, we're talking about something that's uh, eternal. And again, uh, this is something that transcends... Um, Anything that's on Earth, right? This is something that's eternal, and 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 I have to say this because a lot of people who know a little bit a little bit about this stuff tend to refuse to uh, understand the Vedic tradition on its own terms. Let's move on. So a goddess being a person, having of course personality, has more than one name. Just as a human being, such as when a man comes home, his first son calls him dad. His uh, first daughter calls him daddy. Uh, his second daughter calls him papa. And his, and, and his wife calls him honey. These are all names desig designated towards the same personality. Why would a goddess be less? Of course, a goddess would have more than one name. Um, you know, So just as you and I have more than one name, why would a goddess or, or a god uh, be less? Moving on. Yes, indeed, words change over time but they don't change what they're designated at. For example, if I were to say in Old English, water, uh, and then say water, um, water remains water regardless of what someone else calls it. All right, so that has to be said. However, to the main topic at hand, what would be the Old English name for the dawn goddess? Well, we must look at the word for dawn in Old English, given the uh, layout I have here. So, Ushas, Don, um, Eos, Don, Aurora, Don. So, what would it be in Old English? Well, it's very simple. We just have to look for the word Don in Old English. However, I do have to say that Old English is not just uh, a uniform uh, variety of language. 
Uh, there are dialects, and uh, in this video, uh, it's mainly focused on uh, West Saxon. Okay, so yes, it, it is Old English, but uh, we're gonna focus on West Saxon here. So anyway, so the word is dyed, and uh, yeah, this is this word is found in uh, a number of places uh, in Alfred's work. Um, anyway, so this is your word for uh, dyed, um, your for, word for dawn. It could also mean daybreak, but uh, early morning. But how the, how the word is used, it's pretty clear that this word means dawn. So, uh, yeah. So, the name of the dawn goddess in Old English very likely would be, you know, um, I would imagine, it would be dairead, So, and, and it means dawn. All right. So, perfectly applicable. Um, you know, as languages are different, uh, you know, designate towards the same thing. Um, but of course, when we're dealing with a Vedic, uh, deity, you know, it's good to respect the Vedic deity by referring, uh, to the personality in question with the Sanskrit name. But of course we have our own languages and, but, um, I don't know. I, I just wanted to say that as an aside. But anyway, so in Old English, if we were to figure out the name, it would be Dyed. Uh, among the West Saxons, it would be Dyed. Uh, all right. So, um, but I want to know what's Dawn in your language. Let me know down below. All right. So, despite unrecorded attestations of the name Dyed, uh, Dyed, uh, being used for the name of the goddess in the past, however. Uh, because Old English was a gendered language, and what do I mean by this? That yes, you had masculine, feminine, neuter for nouns uh, and ad adjectives. Um, dawn, earth, and other things were described with personality in the past. That's the thing with uh, just in general about the human beings in the past, that the way they would describe things, that, uh, uh, that uh, things in the past, like nature and or what have you, have personality. We sort of we, we we don't really have that much today because a lot of things today have become very impersonal, uh, and this is due to the age that we live in, or what have you. But uh, but that's for another time to talk about, um, or maybe not relevant to this channel. But anyway, um, nevertheless, uh, this does not stop people uh, from using dated dated um, uh, using that word today as it makes logical sense to use it for the Dawn Goddess, among other names for her, such as the famous Eostre, which, um, which later became um, Easter. All right, so, and, and uh, I have a video about that in a link down below. So in conclusion, who is the, who's the Dawn Goddess of the Anglo-Saxons? Well, 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 actually West, West, West Saxons, because we have a West Saxon word here. Uh, it well, it would be a dyed, dyed or dyed, and this is by means of inference. And I'm just as an aside, you know, I'll be happy to find um, uh, the same variant kind of word in in another text in another dialect of Old English. But it may not be only West Saxon, but who knows? Anyway, but sorry, uh, that's aside. Anyway, so by means of inference, because we have Ushas, Don, Eos, Don, Aurora, Don. And anyway, so mean by means of inference, also properly known as Eos today. Can it be used today? Of course. Hail Dayred, Hal Wesud Dayred. Dayred. All right. Anyway, guys, thank you for watching. Be sure to subscribe if you are new. And if you really like the channel, please become a patron at my Patreon page down below. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.